Thank you so much for coming in to join us um, to talk about this report today, Mr. Lennington. Thank you, Nancy. Um, My pleasure to be here, by the way. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. Second inclement day of weather that you've invited me to the <laughs> studio. Know. Every time we come to chat, it's always raining out there. But really do appreciate your responsiveness. Obviously, this report's only been out a few hours, so everyone's still digesting it. It seems like you all included. Yeah, we just got it. We just got it, um, our, you know, after after lunch, and it's a 500-page report. We're digesting it, but. Bottom line is, first of all, we're very thankful the report's out. We're, we're pleased to have worked with uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee on the report. And we're as optimistic as the Senator is about the future of Wounded Warrior Project and what we do. So I guess one of my headline questions here is, is this report wrong? It's, uh, we, take, we take offense in a couple areas. Um, specifically, you know, the program expense, I think we have been very clear that we follow uh, the IRS reporting rules on how we um, categorize um, program expense versus other expenses like fundraising and, and administrative costs. And we uh, respectfully disagree with the way the uh, report categorizes our investment in long-term support trust. That's the program that supports caregivers um, and supports warriors in, in the instance of the loss of a caregiver. Uh, in the past, again, this was decisions made before my time, but Wounded Warrior has uh, set aside some money to take care of warriors that we care for in their home in the instance of the loss of a caregiver. And we disagree with the way the report categorizes that expense. I've talked to many uh, family members, caregivers that are taken care of, will be taken care of by that program, and it's the only program like it in the, in the country and it what allows them to sleep at night. Restfully. So help me to understand, the report says as of last year, 251 injured veterans qualified for funds out of that long-term support trust, but your records that are included show not a single penny has been paid out. Right, so it's a trust fund. It was set aside in the instance of a loss of a caregiver. Right now, Wounded Warrior provides in-home care for more than 600 grievously wounded service members as an alternative to institutionalization by the government. And that, by the way, we're very honored to do so. And we're grateful for the support of the American people to do that. One of the subsets of that program is to take care of the continued in-home care for the warrior if the caregiver passes. And that's what this money has been set aside. It's a trust fund. It's a program expense because we don't have access to those funds. We've set it aside at the behest of those families. And that money is in a vault, if you will, to take care of them long term. Senator Grassley said after questioning you all about this, especially an ad that talked about that 65.4 million had been spent on long-term support, and he was saying he disagreed because he felt like the money had just been deposited to another account, that you all then plucked those ads from rotation. We did, yeah, we did. And we just wanted to take the confusion out of it. Families understand what this fund is all about. We didn't want to confuse our employees or, the, or those that support us about the program, and we're, we're clearer now, I would say, about what the intent of that program is and, and what, that, what, that, what those funds do long term for those. Has anyone been paid out of those funds to date? Not, no, and, and thankfully, no, not yet. Um, I will say that our warriors are aging. The average age of our warrior population is in the high 30s. They continue to age. They are caregivers. Sometimes parents are aging. I spoke to many of those caregivers that are getting up there in years. They don't want the burden on providing that in-home care to fall on their other family members or even the children of those grievously wounded warriors. So having that money set aside so that that continued in-home care can be provided is something we're really proud and honored to provide. So you're saying this is where the, you'll fill in the gaps for government down the road and that's why no money's been spent yet. Right, and we haven't put money in that program because those 250 or 60 that you spoke to that fund is now sufficient to meet the needs of those families. As things continue to come back, uh, we'll continue to assess that program to see if more families need to get into that program that we will then support. Okay, are you all going to change your percentage at all? Do you all claim 80.6% goes directly to programs to help veterans. The Senate report disagree, just like Charity Navigator and Charity Watch have in the past, Charity right. Oversight Groups. They say the number's more in the 60s, 67% is the one Grassley used. Well, Charity Navigator uh, agrees with us, which is great. Um, we're a four-star Charity Navigator program in last year's uh, 990. And by the way, we only use the IRS Form 990 now. Mm -hmm. 
of 75% program expense. Ideally, we would like that number to be as high as it can be, but again, we want to serve more warriors. The need is great and growing. Mm -hmm. we, we are serving more than 100,000 warriors now, and you know, more than 1,000 a month are joining our ranks, so we have to continue to spend some donor dollars on fundraising so we can provide the greater amount of care for the greater number. And as we talked about before, I mean, if we wanted to stay real small and not have the impact we do, then we would have a higher program expense ratio as categorized by the different accounting agencies. So you still stand by the joint cost allocation? We do. Okay. We do. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's another point where you might respectfully disagree with the Senate fund. We, we respectfully disagree. Our 990 is on the web. Uh, folks can go to our 990, download it. Uh, we just published the 16990 on the on the web. Of course, Grassley Report was focused on 15 and earlier, mm -hmm. but yet yeah, we we I mean we think we're pretty clear and we do follow IRS rules as do the other nonprofits and how we account for program expense. What is your reaction to the amount of money that was being spent on first class flights? First of all, we don't do that anymore. We don't fly we don't fly first class or business class flights anymore. As I've gone back and done the work and looked at those 38,000 uh, flights that have been provided, for the most part for warriors, but also staff that accompany those warriors, less than 1% of those were first class and business class flights. And many of those flights, as noted in the Grassley Report, were for service members with disabilities that needed accommodation in business class or first class where they were stretched like Some weren't. They said and it was 5% of the overall flights were first and business class, and of those, 60% were for your employees. And many of our employees are warriors themselves. Many of our employees have disabilities that need to be accommodated. But what we what we decided a year ago when I got here mm -hmm. was let's just let's just not let's just not do it. I mean let let's just restrict all first class and business class flights. By exception, we will. I, I will. By the way, I haven't looked at any yet since June. Um, we've taken that. We've ta we've changed that policy, and we've restricted significantly how uh, we fly warriors and how we fly staff that accompany those warriors on uh, engagement events. Okay, and also the uh, Wounded Warrior Project often boasts the impact of your alumni programs. I heard you already mentioned more than 100,000 are enrolled right now, uh, but the report kind of focused on that a lot of these were sporting events. Some, there was even a Texas poker event, a midnight pool party, a wine and food festival. All and great events. So all, you stand by all, those events? Listen, all great events. 7,500 events a year. We accept, we solicit warriors to participate in events that get them out of isolation, get them into events that are fun with other warriors so they can get resi gain resilience and, and courage from them to seek access to other programs that we offer in the mental health, air, mental health care arena, physical health and wellness arena, economic empowerment arena. I mean, the, the getting warriors together in groups is really... What, what I believe is the most important first step in their rehabilitation. And when you look at any individual event, I mean, it looks like a midnight pool party. Mm -hmm. The midnight pool party was a family event at Fort Hamilton for 10 families, barbecue, kids in a pool, watching Disney flicks at night, and then at the end of the night, going home and gaining newfound friendships. The poker night or event sponsored by donors that want to highlight Texas Hold'em events for Warriors where they get together and the one that finishes the night with the most chips gets free tickets to the Jets game that were donated. That's, that's the type of events we're talking about. So you, I mean anybody can cherry pick one or two events out of there and say it looks bad, but until you get into the depths of it and see what it really means, it's really about the connect piece of our mission to connect, serve, and empower. It's connecting Warriors with each other with the services and programs that are provided in their community and by other nonprofits, not just Wounded Warrior, and then connect them to the other programs Wounded Warrior provides that helps in their rehabilitation. The report looked at your records and found 18% of the, all of the alumni events were attended by just one warrior. Right. Is that a problem? Uh, we, we, have, we have a lot of events that are sometimes attended by hundreds and sometimes attended by one. We may have a donor that says, I have an extra ticket for a game that I want a warrior to go to. That's a, that's a program event with one warrior attended. We obviously look to accommodate as many warriors as we can at events because it's that fellowship that allows them to make that connection and help them uh, continue to heal. The report is urging that 
alumni program in particular have some more oversight to make sure that the programs are as impactful as possible and has, have the biggest reach as possible. Is that something you might consider? Yeah, Lindsay, in fact, we, we had a lot of discussions with the Senator's team on that, and, and we are continuing to look for ways to be as